Deep Cervical Flexor Endurance Training. This exercise is performed supine at 45 degrees on an incline borne with arms and hands resting on the abdomen. This exercise isolates the cranio, vertebral, and lower cervical flexors. Here you can see a cervical roll being used for phase one of this exercise. Phase two of this exercise involves craniovertebral flexion, followed by lower cervical flexion, holding the craniovertebral flexion at the top, and lowering eccentrically with the lower cervical flexors, and then releasing craniovertebral flexion. Most clients with neck pain will have difficulty overcoming craniovertebral extension without increased pain. Thus, a modification is made by using two towel rolls. Again, we see phase one, where craniovertebral flexion is completed and then released to the starting point. Phase two is completed in two parts, craniovertebral flexion, followed by lower cervical flexion. Then we see the reverse of this movement, which involves lower cervical extension, which is controlled eccentrically, and then eccentric craniovertebral extension. Common compensations include combining the first two motions. Combining the second two motions. Hyperextension at the end of the movement. Failure to maintain sagittal plane alignment, which is often due to a suboccipital postural fault. This can be corrected by the therapist with tactile cues. Having the client close her eyes can also help train proper alignment. Instructing clients to do a chin tuck often results in jaw opening instead of cranial vertebral flexion. After sufficient deep cervical flexor endurance has been established, lowering the incline board will increase the force of gravity, therefore progressing the resistance of this exercise.